Doctors say it is time to pull the plug on tanning beds. They warn the soaring rate of deadly skin cancers like melanoma, especially among young women, can be linked to the tanning industry. This story is a follow-up to the Canadian Cancer Society study we told you about yesterday. You might remember that. Um, it warned Canadian teens and 20-somethings were putting themselves at higher risk for skin cancers because they were chasing you know, the perfect tan. The survey also found more than one quarter of young Canadian women use tanning salons. And joining us now to talk about the risks is dermatologist Dr. Nathan Rosen. I want to start with the um, dangers of tanning salons because I think a lot of women go in thinking they're going to come out just looking great and feeling great. But what is going on beneath the skin, if you will? Well, at the risk of being offed by the higher-ups in the tanning salon industry, I do want to tell you the tu- truth about tanning, and it's tanning, tanning salons, tanning beds, mm-hmm. and even ultraviolet light exposure from the natural sun. A tan is an injury. It's the body's biologic response to injury from ultraviolet light. What do you mean by an injury? The, the skin turns darker and that, that's an injury? It's the skin's reaction to mm-hmm. injury in, its, in, the cell, in the makeup of the cells, in the cell's DNA. And this is a response to try to protect the skin from further injury. However, it's not a very efficacious method of doing this. There's only very little protection provided by a tan to prevent further injury. And that's a common misconception. So in people who are going to get a tan feeling like they're protecting themselves, mm-hmm. for example, if they're going to go on vacation, well... You're only providing yourself with a sun protection factor of about two to four with a tan. You know, they say they're doing it because they don't want to burn. If you look at tanning versus burning, is there a best worst case scenario? Well, you know, certainly a burn is worse than a tan Mm -hmm. because they are just different levels of, of injury from the sun. But there's nothing good about either because they are both processes of injury. So there... There, it would be better to have a tan than a burn, except that it's a misconception that a tan is going to protect you from the burn. What's going to protect you from the burn is good sun practice, sun mm-hmm. safety, not exposing yourself to the peak hours of the sun, and wearing a good sunscreen when you are exposed. When you say a good sunscreen, we talked uh, to some of the people who were lying on beaches uh, across this country yesterday who said they were using everything from oil uh, to SPF 15 and, uh, and beyond. What do you suggest to your clients when they want to go out in the sun and protect their skin? Well, I suggest that all of my patients wear an SPF 45 or higher. Really? With UVA protection. And the reason for that higher number is that, again, in terms of that number, that SPF sun protection factor number, um, it's based on people who are applying a very significant amount of sunscreen to their body. That's how it was studied. However, people really use about a third of that amount of sunscreen and are probably getting somewhere around a third of that protection. Mm -hmm. So by using a 45, they might be getting the protection of a 15. The other thing that's very important is to look for the letters UVA on the bottle of the sunscreen because ultraviolet A rays are also important in causing cancer, there isn't a numbering system at this time for ultraviolet A protection, so you just need to see that on the bottle there is ultraviolet A protection afforded with the sunscreen. One of the um, points in that Cancer Society report released was that younger, younger and younger women are going out looking for that tan. What are you seeing in your practice when it comes to skin that has been injured because of the tanning in, 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 with age? Well, certainly there are two definites about sun exposure, sun tanning, sun burning. One is that it ages your skin much more rapidly than it would otherwise. And you can see, if you compare the cheek on your face to the butt cheek, you can see how much aging has gone on because of sun exposure on yourself. And the other thing is the overwhelming incidence of skin cancer now. This year alone, 73,000 Canadians Mm -hmm. will be diagnosed with skin cancer. That's a big number. And the age that you're seeing in your practice? It's younger and younger all the time. One thing I do want to ask you before I let you go, and that is the vitamin D suggestion that we need this. We need to, you know, our body needs to make this and that sun provides it. Uh, What do you say to those who say, well, I'm going out to get my vitamin D? 
Well, vitamin D is certainly important, and it's important that everyone gets their vitamin D. However, here again, there's a misconception about how much sun exposure you actually need in order to convert your body, your skin's vitamin D. And the truth is that it's very minimal amount of exposure mm-hmm. on a daily basis. Probably you can expose the palms of your hands for 10 minutes a day, and That's that it? will be sufficient in terms of conversion of vitamin D. So that argument doesn't wash with it you. Doesn't, it doesn't hold any water. And, you know, using your sunscreen, you're still getting enough uh, conversion to vitamin D. So there is really no reason to go and to overexpose mm-hmm. yourself. Everything in moderation, I think, is the way to go. You know what? When you talk about age, I just want to tell our viewers what you told me. You're really 65, but you stay out of the sun, right? That's right. <laughs> and I started the Botox early. <laughs> Dr. Nathan Rosen joining us here in studio. Very good to have you on the program. Thank you very much. You're watching CBC News Morning. We will be back right after this break.